Hey everyone, this is a fun one, but aren't they all? I love black and white movies and looking at old photographs. He's looking at you, kid. But sometimes it would be nice to see what they actually would have looked like in full color. He's looking at you, kid. Now we can do that, and quite easily, and completely free. To do this, you need to have already installed Face Fusion onto your computer. I have two different videos you can check out on how to install it. If you're comfortable using command line or think you can, I'd recommend using the video on the left. Otherwise, use the one on the right that has you install Pinocchio first for those not comfortable using command line. Both will have the same user experience and both videos are in the description below. The process is actually quite simple. Obviously, have Face Fusion open first. Second, turn off Face Swapper or any of the other frame processor options and turn on only frame colorizer. Taking a look at the new options that appeared, we first have the frame colorizer model. The five you can see here are DD Color, DD Color Artistic, Deoldify, Deoldify Artistic, and Deoldify Stable. Now, something really important here. Unlike the face swapper model, unlike the face enhancer model, and unlike the frame enhancer model, there is not an obvious winner as to which one is best. There might be one or two you don't like, but they are all situational and depend on what your target video or image is. And before I go on to the settings, the very first time you go to use any of the colorizer models, it will have to download that model. So if you're wondering why your system is stuck loading, it's because it is downloading a rather large model file. You can see here, I went through and purposely switched between each of them to force the download now so that I wouldn't have to wait for each to download later. And you can see how large each of them are and about how long it might take for you to download, depending on your internet connection. The first setting for each of the models, Frame Colorizer Blend, is very simple. It's basically how much of the original black and white you want to keep compared to how much of the new color version. You can kind of think of it as a saturation slider in an image editor. 100% will keep it at full color saturation and 0% will be no saturation, thus black and white. Put it somewhere in between and you'll get the ratio of the two. Here's 50% for a quick, easy example. The other setting is frame colorizer size. Though size is technically the correct term, I like to think of it as strength. Try the 256 or even lower first. If you aren't getting enough color out of the conversion, try upping it to a higher amount. If it already looks good, there isn't much point in changing it. And that's really all there is to it. But now I'm going to show a bunch of examples of each of the models and maybe a few different colorizer size examples to see those differences too. Most of these are going to be still frames as videos can take quite a while, but I'll make sure to show a couple examples of those too. First, I'm going to start with the image that you've already seen, the infamous Times Square Kiss. And here's what it looks like with the five different colorizers. You can already see that the DD Color Artistic looks like it didn't do anything. But now, if I up the colorizer size to 384, you get this. If this happens again, I'm going to just show it as it is, as you know how to fix or change it, or at least attempt to. Now, let's see how blonde Marilyn is, and what color these models think her clothes are. Alright, I wasn't expecting that. I was thinking maybe red. But it looks like we got some purple and blue for the most part. Good job with her blonde hair, though. And here's French actress Irina Demick riding a bike. I guess they all seem to agree that her top should be pink and shiny. And here's a nearly deserted street in what I believe to be New York. Ten cents for juice, a donut, and coffee? I'm sold. The image is so busy, it's difficult for the models. I'd almost want to get a composite of a few of them together. This here is the 1903 Spiker 60 HP. I'm assuming that's for horsepower. The world's first petrol fueled four wheel drive car with a top speed of 80 to 90 miles per hour. For some reason, the models didn't want to give this image much of any color, but one wanted to make it sepia tone for some reason. Now it's time to get back to nature. Go touch some grass and kick rocks. I chose this first image mostly because I was really interested in what color it would make of all the flowers. Alright, these turned out gorgeous. 
you think they were actually originally color if you didn't know. And these next few images are by someone you may have heard of, Ansel Adams, starting with Yosemite Valley Thunderstorm from 1949. Again, a couple of these turned out fantastic, but a couple not so great. Next, we have Half Dome in Yosemite with the Merced River in the foreground during the winter. Other than making up some random colors for parts of the snow, these look beautiful. And here's a shot of Half Dome once again, but from Glacier Point with four onlooking tourists in 1937. Though not a ton of saturation, I like the subtlety with this one, except for the one that stayed black and white. And now for the most important one. Well, to me. My great uncle Clem. DD Color for some reason didn't want to add any color. But you Oldify did a decent job, especially with the artistic model. Now, let's check out some video and see how good of a job it does. First, here's a short scene from the 1940 movie, The Shop Around the Corner. Great movie, by the way. Highly recommend. Well, what do you say now? I think people who like to smoke candy and listen to cigarettes will love it. <laughs> well, what do you say now? I think people who like to smoke candy and listen to cigarettes will love it. <laughs> a bit too much saturation with the DD colors and a lot of flickering. Well, what do you say now? <laughs> I think people who like to smoke candy and listen to cigarettes will love it. The deoldifies turned out a little bit better with muted color, so it's not nearly as distracting. And here's the famous beach kissing scene from the 1953 movie, From Here to Eternity. I figured this one would be challenging, and it definitely was. It really didn't work out well for any of them. Models couldn't tell that the sand wasn't water, and I think the quick movement of the camera was just too much for it. This next one is from the 1939 movie Wyoming Outlaw, with a very young-looking John Wayne. The first two look great. And so do the following three. I was worried after that last one that maybe this wouldn't work out too well for video. I'm glad I was wrong to be worried. This last one, I wanted to try a clip that had the potential for a lot of color to see what the models would do. This is a scene from the 1940 version of Pride and Prejudice. Never fear Park is let at last. And to a young man of importance, his name is Bingley. Never fear Park is let at last. And to a young man of importance, his name is Bingley. It seems to have mostly turned out the same way as the first clip from The Shop Around the Corner. Both DD colors overdid it with saturation, but I'm disappointed with the choices of color or lack of vibrancy for the dresses. But the bonnets, or whatever they are, look good. They also have the same flickering issue. Never feel Park is let at last. And to a young man of importance, his name is Bingley. And the three deoldifies are, once again, subtle and muted. They look decent, but could definitely use more color. Maybe something could be done afterward in DaVinci Resolver or whatever to amp up the color a bit. Now they aren't perfect, but I like the idea of being able to do this. It worked really well with the Wyoming Outlaw scene. It is a lot of fun trying out different clips and movies to see what the results are, but I should probably stop with these for now. What I want to do now are a couple of experiments. First, I have an old family photo with a ton of faces in it, and I want to see how the models handle it. And that's what I was afraid of. I think it's just too much information for the models to deal with. Changing the color size didn't help either. So here's the workaround solution if you have a similar issue. It's not elegant, but it'll work. Cut your image up into parts like this one. And let's see what we get with that. The first DD color looks pretty good, while the artistic still did nothing. The deoldifies worked, but not completely. So let's see what happens on the last one where only the top row got color in their faces and clothes if I up the color size to 512. 
Yep, that helped quite a bit. I think I still like the regular DD color overall for this image, though. Now for one final experiment, but with two different images. What I want to try here is to take images that already have a very specific and vibrant color swatch, make them black and white, and then see how accurate the color reproduction is. First, here's an image of my friend's giant dog, Chester, in my backyard. So I'm going to first convert that to black and white. And now let's see what we get with the colorizer models. Actually much better than I expected. The DD colors look very similar to the original if you don't look too close. And two of the deoldifies look good, but as always, muted. I don't like the artistic one as it puts some random colors around the plants along the wall though. Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison of each next to the original. The other image I'm going to try, I really don't think the models stand much of a chance on. This is my nephew's Boy Scouts shirt and vest. There's a lot going on, and I just doubt that the models have any idea what the image really even is. Again, here's the black and white version. Now let's see the results. Sadly, this is better than I'd expected, but it's still pretty bad. They generally got the blue and red correct, but just had zero idea as to where they deferred and ended up bleeding into each other. Like I said, I figured this one wouldn't go too well. But here's the side by side comparisons once again. So what do you think of the colorizer? What images or movies would you like to see in Technicolor? I know I'm going to continue messing around with old movies and family photos. And that's all I've got for now. I would absolutely appreciate it if you would take a second to like, subscribe, and share this video. Maybe even leave a comment or ask a question below. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a few things. As always, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day. Play it once, Sam. For all time's sake, play it, Sam. Play as time goes by. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine.